So how can we use Roman numerals to analyze music? Well, when we're talking about analyzing music, what we're really saying is that we want words to describe the music in theory, music theory terms. Um, that might include key signatures, it might include intervals, and it might also include the chord progression, and that's where the Roman numerals come in. Um, let's take a look at an example of this. And to start us off, um, a lot of the examples that we'll be doing involve four-part harmony. And if you've ever sung in a choir, a high school choir, or maybe a church choir, then you've heard an example of four-part harmony, because up high you've got the soprano, a little bit lower uh, is the alto, um, then you have tenor, and then bringing up the rear is the bass on the low notes. And so those, that's four-part harmony. Another example might be a string quartet where you have violins playing the high, high notes, um, then you have viola and cello uh, on the low end of things. The reason we're going to use this is because it's a good starting point uh, to talk about these analytical ideas that we're uh, discussing right now. So if you take a look, look at this example, we've got four voices, and we're simply going to call them soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Um, we'll get to, that'll become a little bit more important uh, in a few lessons, um, but for right now, let's just take a look at this. Okay. Um, when we're analyzing music, first we want to establish what key we're in. Okay. We can look over here, there's no sharps or flats. Um, it could be C major or A minor. If we look at the last chord, the lowest note of the last chord is a C, and therefore we know that we're in the key of C major. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this first chord right here. Um, the first thing you want to do is just identify what notes are in the chord. So, starting from the bottom, we've got C, and then there's an E here, and then I see a G, and then there's another C. Okay. Now, I went ahead and wrote all four notes, but if you have more than one note, or one note is doubled, then you actually don't have to write it again. Um, we're just concerned with the notes that are different. Now, if you look at this, C, E, G, then you can see that it's a C major chord. Now, we're in the key of C major, and if you remember the work that we just did, C major is the one chord, or the tonic chord in C major. So, we're going to put a Roman numeral 1 right here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the next chord, again, let's figure out what notes we're, we're dealing with. We've got an F down here. Then we've got another F, so we don't have to write it again. Then we have A, and then on top, in the soprano, we have C. So, we have an F, A, C, and you'll recognize that as an F major chord. Okay. Well, if you go back to those diatonic triads, F major is the subdominant chord. So we're going to put a Roman numeral 4 down here. And that tells us that it's a 4 chord in the key of C major. If we continue on, um, let's identify the notes. This note is G. Um, then we have a D here. Then we've got another G, and then this is a B. Now, G, D, B, uh, you won't recognize as a chord, but if you rearrange that and write G, B, D, then you can tell that it's a G major chord. Again, go back to those diatonic triads. G major is the, sub, uh, sorry, is the dominant chord in the key of C. And so we're going to write a Roman numeral 5 there. And then we can analyze this last chord, and it actually turns out to be another 1 chord. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is how we use Roman, numeral, Roman numerals to help us analyze music. We can describe the chord progression as 1, 4, 5, 1. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do a little practice with this, and then we're going to talk about uh, how inversions can be incorporated to this as well.